So letting you know right out the gate, WB Games did send me a code to download this game for free. In which case, I, I then went and bought the physical copy of the game because I'm a physical copy snob like that. So I feel like the, the cost balances itself out. Double dipping aside, I feel like I should still tell you they did give me a digital copy of the game. All right, in a world where it feels like it's been forever since I've done a review on a video game, Mortal Kombat is what I call church. We got to talk about it. So Mortal Kombat 1 is a reset of the Mortal Kombat universe. Again, it's kind of what MK9 was really. But MK1 is a bit different because at the end of Mortal Kombat 11, spoilers for the end of Mortal Kombat 11, Kronika the Time Titan is defeated by Liu Kang. Liu Kang becomes the new Time Titan. He's like, all right, I'm just gonna start everything out from scratch. So he has, there's balance. Existence seems perfect, but in a world of constants and variables and manipulations, you see some of the former problems start to rear their ugly heads. And what I like about this is Mortal Kombat 1's a celebration of the 3D era of Mortal Kombat, you know, Deadly Alliance, Deception, Armageddon. I was wondering if they were gonna do its own celebration or just kind of forget that the 3D era of Mortal Kombat ever happened. And while this is still the 2D format of the fighting game mechanic, it is a celebration of that 3D era of Mortal Kombat. And I'm glad they're celebrating it because the 3D era did have some cool stuff. As for the story mode, the story mode is great. It's complex. It's it's engaging, it's intriguing. Whether you're talking about Netherrealm Studios or you go before that, just call it Ed Boon and his team. They've always been next level in storytelling in a fighting game. There are fighting games out there that have cool stories or compelling stories, but in terms of execution and hammering that story home in a cinematic quality experience, it's not even close. It's Mortal Kombat, tip of the spear. And I thought the story was great. You don't know what's gonna happen. It's a completely new universe. It's Neat seeing the constants and variables, things that end up being the same, things that are different. They expand on some characters, making characters important that didn't feel important in the 3D era of Mortal Kombat. I will say though, by the end, it does lean a bit too heavily in, we'll just, it's something I can't get away from. I can't turn anywhere in the world of pop culture and entertainment and not run into some multiverse storyline. I mean, by implication, you are dealing with it here. I just don't think they needed to lean so heavily into it by the end. But the story as a celebration, as its own story, is it's still a cool one. Also props to their commitment. There are cameo characters of Sonya Blade and Kano, but Sonya Blade and Kano were heavily tied into the conflict of Outworld and that's really not happening <laughs> in this one, so it wouldn't make sense to have them in this game. Cameos aside, they're not in this game. In a world where Netherrealm Studios ends up killing characters and then bringing them back as revenants or whatever, it's like they were afraid to commit to storylines in certain parts. Um, I, I commend them for committing to this. Graphically, I think Mortal Kombat 1 looks gorgeous, but I thought MK11 looked gorgeous as well. PS5 version of Mortal Kombat 11 and Mortal Kombat 1 look to be of the same graphical caliber. I don't know for sure. I'm sure there's some data out there or you can look into it yourself, go into the character mode where you can zoom in and out of the character and get a close up of them, which who are we kidding? We know what that's there for. But this does have some of the best looking stages in terms of fight stages I have seen in MK, period. They look gorgeous. As for the fighting mechanics, it's a Mortal Kombat game. If you're a Mortal Kombat fan, you know what to expect by now. It's stiffer combat than Street Fighter, feels more locked into a box in terms of its combo system. Bit unfortunate for Mortal Kombat that it came out just three months and some change after Street Fighter VI did. But Street Fighter VI is smooth. We're talking smoother than Cammy's Cake smooth. That game is... In terms of fighting mechanic, it's it's the game. But it never feels as stiff as, say, the 3D era of Mortal Kombat games that came out before in the 2000s. So if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, you'll be fine. If Mortal Kombat has not won you over yet with its fighting mechanic, this isn't gonna be the one that sells you. We know what we're clocking into Mortal Kombat for. Stiffer combat with some gory fucking edge. So for my Mortal Kombat experience, when I get into a new Mortal Kombat game, I try to find the characters that feel more organic. For me, that's Johnny Cage, Baraka, he's a little more locked into the box, but his moves are all blade combo moves, so it just, it feels more fluid. Smoke is a god online. He's just busted. He's fucked up. And for me, Lee May, Lee May's a bit of a dark horse for me. I really like how she plays. I was actually fighting a dude online who was Smoke. Of course, <laughs> lots of Smokes online. But I was Lee May, and he was like, Lee May, I, 
you don't see a lot of Lee Mays on here. I ended up winning against, he was a really cool dude. We chatted for a bit, but I won. I feel like one of the main reasons I won is because not a lot of people choose Lee May. So we didn't know what to expect from Lee May and that in and of itself is an advantage. And of course the mixed bag, which does lean into the side of bummer for me is that every Mortal Kombat edition that comes out, every sequel, every game, the characters don't fight the same, they don't play the same. That is to say, this is probably the first Mortal Kombat game in a very long time where Melina is just, I don't speak the language of her fighting style in here. She was one of my mains in MK11. In here, I am kind of lost. People online do a great job with her. Same with Sindel. Sindel, I ended lives online. It was fantastic. She was one of my main go-tos, but this time around, I'm like, eh, she, she's not the same. The cameos are fun. I thought the cameos were going to annoy the living shit out of me. I thought they were gonna be these busted, broken ass things. People just bring in. There are some cameos that are better than others. They don't feel broken. You can't necessarily spam them. Some people are better than others. Like they're all, everyone online is better than I am at using the cameo to string into the combo as a move in the combo. But the fact that cameos have their own brutalities and their own fatality, that just makes them feel like part of the team. They have done away with the offense and defense meters that MK11 had, took it back to the meter system more akin to MKX and MK9. That offensive meter that just recharged at an insanely fast rate. So in MK11, it was just a series of combos and meter burn specials you were going up against and putting against other people. Annoying to take, fun to dish out. That's just kind of how the online pain of busted fighting game mechanics go. So it looks like they made this move to make MK1 more balanced for competitive play sake. Also seen with a change that I noticed when I was fighting some ranked matches, did some ranked matches, then went on to do some invasion fights, some towers, came back to ranked matches, and I just had the same character and cameo selected that I had initially. I didn't know why. Yeah, you choose your character and your cameo and that's who you have. You have to reselect a new character and a new cameo and then go into the online matches. For ranked matches anyway. For casual, you pick as you go into the fight. You and your fighter pick at the same time like any other Mortal Kombat game. That takes a bit to get used to because it's easy just to go into a ranked match. You're like, oh, fuck, I didn't want that character. Damn it. My first four losses was because I had the wrong character picked. However, I get why they did it because we've all run into that situation online where you're like, all right, I'm gonna choose this character. And someone's like, I'm gonna choose that character because you chose that character. You're like, well, if you're choosing that character, I'm gonna choose that character. And they're like, well, if you're doing that, I'm gonna choose that character. You just go back and forth. It takes forever to get the fight started. Now you go in blind, they go in blind. They don't know who they're fighting against. You don't know who you're fighting against. Rest assured you're fighting against smoke. And now elephant in the room, uh, there is no crypt this time around. Crypt has been a staple since Deadly Alliance. And now no crypt for the first time in about 20 years. Over 20 years, actually. In Mortal Kombat 1, you get gold coins, you can smelt them down, a thousand coins a pop, and you get some random piece of something. I've gotten concept art, I've gotten the Alan Grant skin for Johnny Cage. But in a world where we had towers and crypt, and that's how we got stuff, we now have towers, invasion mode, and now smelting down gold coins. So starting it off with invasion mode, it's a series of worlds that you go into and it essentially looks like a board game. Every space you land on is a new fight. You get more stuff. There's some sort of nerf that takes place in there. Maybe the ground's on fire. Maybe acid's raining from the sky. Maybe they have that aura around them, that green aura that scrambles all your buttons around. Which is absolutely the worst one. But you get seasonal currency for that. You also get talismans. You can also, you have items you can use for these fights to make these fights or the tower fights a little more palatable. For all of these, you can only hold a finite amount of them. You can hold quite a few talismans, but that fills up pretty fast. Then you keep winning talismans that aren't as good as the ones you already have. So you just end up, your prizes just feel kind of wasted. You're like, thanks for the talisman. I'm going to go ahead and shit can that because I need to shit can one of them because I'm maxed out on what I can hold. But whereas in MK11, you just had an echelon of items that helped you out with these tower fights. In this game, in MK1, you can only hold a few. However, to open these hidden treasure chests on the board in invasion mode, you need a key. You need to buy a key from the collector. So that does take up one slot. So that's one slot less because you probably want to have one of those. So I play the living shit out of invasion mode. You're supposed to have 40 something days to beat invasion mode. I did it in about three days. You give me something to indulge, I'm gonna overindulge. I am who I am. And by the end, man, you get so many serums and things that bump up your stats and you're resistant to certain elements. And I gotta give a big thank you to them for making the currency 
they give you a plentiful amount of currency. You know, the gear that you can buy from the seasonal store costs about 1,500 seasonal coins. I think I have like 70,000 or something right now. However, I just saw the microtransactions for the premium gear currency and that's some fucking bullshit. The thing I would love for them to patch to make this one a little better in terms of what you get, it's not a currency. It's XP for the cameos. For you trophy hunters out there, the platinum requires that you gain mastery of five cameo characters. From what I can see, that's bringing them up to level 15. How much XP do I get per fight? Oof, that's gonna take a while for five. Is it as bad as trying to grind cat call with Catwoman and Injustice 2 in order to get that plat? I don't know. Injustice 2 at least gave you the option to build an AI character that can do the heavy lifting and do the grinding while you did your horror movie binge in October. No such option here. In fact, there's dumb bullshit like this. That's probably gonna get patched and fixed, but right now it's just obnoxious. It feels like a backslide. Mortal Kombat 11 and Injustice 2 let you save a few different visual loadouts per character. Here you get one visual loadout per character. And that's it. You can change how the character looks in the customization menu, but you can't save five different variations of them. You just get the one. Also in a world where you size up MK11 to MK1 and you're like, I do feel like 11 did do that better. I like the towers in MK11. I like being able to see all the towers on screen at one time. And you pick your little floating island, you cycle the towers, you see what your prize is gonna be and you proceed accordingly choose whatever tower you want. This is formatted like the board game format that is invasion mode. You gotta walk around this board game, find the tower you might wanna do on that particular day. If you find a tower, maybe you don't wanna do that tower. Now that you're looking at it, you gotta walk across the board, find another one. It just takes a lot longer to get to the tower fight. You do start learning the layout and it starts going by a little quicker, but man, when sizing that up next to the MK11 towers where you're like, it's all right there. I'll take that one. Also in MK11, you saw the prize that that tower provided if you beat that tower. It helps in determining which tower you wanna to take on that day. In MK1, there is no such information. The tower fights did not hold a candle to the invasion. Invasion's more fun, secret areas to explore, secret areas to unlock. You gotta use a certain character in a certain fight and do a fatality and that'll unlock a new path or unlock a new chest. Towers just felt boring by comparison. Actually, you know what? <laughs> Here's a tower story. It's the seasonal tower. You go up to the seasonal tower, it's like, don't do this unless you can. This is hardcore end game shit. Do it if you're sure. I wasn't sure, but I thought I'd give it a shot. I got to the end. The end of this ball numbing, cheap ass game mechanic grind of 18 floors, every other floor, is a survive mini game, so we'll call it nine fights. Then the very end, the last thing was a test your might. And I whiffed on the test your might. The tower more or less said to me, Yes, you can get the fuck out of my sight now. Kicked me out, I lost. I lost the tower. Was it my lack of fighting game talent? No, it was test your might. That is so trollish. <laughs> it was like, did the NetherRealm just trolling their fans. That's fucked up. A big thing I do feel the loss on are the, uh, the specific character dialogue intros. The character dialogue is in here, but it seems to be only in a versus match. As someone who spent the bulk of his single player experience in Invasion, you never see it there. You just go into the fight, dragon symbol, round one fight. It makes you feel like you're missing out. It's a strange call when the Invasion is the new format that the single player experience for Mortal Kombat 1 revolves around. Also in versus mode, the characters seem to have a couple of different intros. Most of the time they have their dialogue, they break away and they do this martial arts power stance and then we go to fight. I thought the character intros in Mortal Kombat 11 felt far more cinematic. Probably helps that they're woven into the character dialogue experience. The outro victory stances for the character is also another funny call. It's the same camera angle, same shot, so it feels like it lacks variety. Whereas you look at Mortal Kombat 11, Cinematic, if not some of the most epic outros I'd seen in a fighting game. So in the end, Mortal Kombat 1, it's fun. It's a fun Mortal Kombat experience. The story mode's deep. The fighting mechanics are what you expect from Mortal Kombat at this point. The fatalities range from, okay, that's fine, they're dead, to brilliant. Invasion mode's an awesome addition, but I can't help but feel the loss of the crypt. As much as you can make the argument, the end result is the same. You still spend currency to get gear. The crypt was his own... Oh, it was like opening a booster pack or something. There's something about that intermittent reinforcement. I think they call that gambling addiction. 
I'm just saying it was fun. I've come to really enjoy the extras that NetherRealm puts into their games like Injustice 2, Mortal Kombat 11. I feel like this was lacking in that respect. I feel like you get less out of this than Mortal Kombat 11 has. Granted, it might be a little unfair. You're comparing a vanilla release to Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, but I have heard from competitive fighting game players that this is more balanced. So they prefer this over Mortal Kombat 11. So it all comes down to what you want. As much fun as the multiple world invasion board game fighting game was, I have to ask myself, what am I gonna do now that I've completed that season? Am I gonna fight in the towers? Am I gonna fight online? Or in a world where this is a pretty stacked year for video games, am I gonna go on to other stuff and come back when the new season drops? I'll probably do that third option. That's not the MK addiction I'm used to, so I gotta say I prefer Mortal Kombat 11 to this. If NetherRealms taught me anything in terms of their fighting game experience, is that the experience does improve with their updates. Just feels kind of like an incomplete game right now for me. However, it is still Mortal Kombat, so unless it's a Mortal Kombat Mythologies game, you can count on it being pretty fun. So if you're a hardcore MK fan, you've already bought this at full price. Who are we kidding? But if you haven't bought Mortal Kombat 1, if you're waiting to see what people say, if you're still having fun with Mortal Kombat 11, or even Injustice 2 at this point, I'd say wait to buy it at sale price. I will say if I'm putting something on my wish list, so Carl Urban's been cast as Johnny Cage in the sequel to the new Mortal Kombat movie that came out a couple years ago. If Homelander's coming to Mortal Kombat, I would love to see a Johnny Cage skin that's Carl Urban as Johnny Cage with Carl Urban voicing him. Kind of like they did with Mortal Kombat X when they brought in Predator, they gave a Carl Weather skin to Jax. I don't want to put it all on my wish list, but if I had a wish list, that's the wish. Or so Mortal Kombat 1, have you played it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.